cakes and coffee. They know how to not break mirrors. Say hello. Hello. She caught me. That's okay, Dorothy. It's my one regret. Hey. When are you having your babies? Good morning, happy Tuesday. My milk replacer that I ordered last week is in and I have time because I'm patiently waiting for lambs that have yet not arrived. I just finished checking. No babies. So yeah, I'm going to take this little bit of time and run up and grab that milk replacer. Don't know what Jess and Mark are doing here. What are you doing? Is it good? I heard that. Oh, we're in for treats. This is from Christina, who made my website. Oh. Oh. The Practice by Seth God Godin. Godin started reading this gem of a book, and so much of what it talks about made me think of you and the practice you've put in day after day that serves as an inspiration to us all. Hope you get a chance to read it when you can. Enjoy, Christina. Oh, you're so sweet. She made me a little card. It's our neighbor doing manure. He's not waving. Hi. Bye. We have a, a friend uh, who lives in Ontario just south of us, quite a bit, well, quite a bit south of us. He's got the cleanest equipment in all of Ontario, probably all of North America. And he's kind of hashtagged at Andy Clean on Twitter. And he has been sending out like these Andy Clean stickers on his own tab for like ages. And Mark said the other day, he's like, I feel really bad for him because he's got to pony up all that postage for people. So Mark sent him two rolls of stamps and then a couple of my like sheepishly me stickers. And look, he sent us Andy Clean stickers. So cool. Thank you, Andy. Oh, I love this stuff. So cool. And last but not least, I ordered this a while ago from a sweet, sweet girl, Erica Sales. If this is it, yep. And she is killing it on TikTok right now. She's a Jersey farmer and I love my Jersey farmers because I love my jerseys. I know Erica through her parents and her mom's sister who is a really true dear friend of mine. Anyways, this is her merch and I'm so excited. So she's known for her for her cows, crocs, and coffee. So congrats, Erica, on your merch. Oh, I'm so excited about that shirt. Okay, bye. Okay, I have my bobcat mirrors and my windshield wiper. That will make a lot of my viewers happy because you do not appreciate when I feed. <laughs> and my bobcat mirrors, or uh, windshield. Oh, wait. They know how to not break mirrors. A lot of stuff. Here we go. She's so pretty. 
Say hello. Hello. And the baby. All right. I should be able to do this, right? We're gonna try. Okay, it looks like just this comes apart. And that goes back on it like so. Oh, too big. I'm just gonna use these parts because there's nothing wrong with this part, I don't think. This was just fixed literally two months ago, maybe. Just did this mirror, and poor Carissa hit the other one, but the other one was, to her defense, already really bad. So she did us a favor, actually. There we go. I hate these things. God, they're so annoying. Shoot. Where did that go? Oh, right at my feet. Thank God. You know what? I'm gonna do it. Slide it on. I think that might be easier. Give them this. They make this so I can fix it, which, kudos. I like easy stuff. <sighs> Awkward. There. Sweet. I'll adjust that later. Yay. Just like so. Okay, now for the other one. Okay, I found the right tool, I think. This might make it a little easier. Now, the only thing is, I think this is really bent, like bad. So I think we needed a whole new one of these. Oh, that's the right size. Why did they make the, they made them a different size. Okay, hold that thought. Ah, perfect. Hello? What are you doing? She's barking in the house. Was she? Yeah, she's been sick on the... In her crate? Yeah. Oopsie. Can she hear her in the off? Like, well, she doesn't the office. stay in there. Do you like what we got into the tractor? What? That the one? The fact that the cab is off? Do I like what you did with it? Yeah. That's great. Yeah, that's really bad. Well, it's still work. I, it's think, an angle. I think it will be fine, so. Oh, it's so nice Better than clean. nothing. I wonder if it pivots. You know what I mean? No. It's got to pivot. This is to pivot. It doesn't, it looks like you can bend it, but you can't. Yeah, well, if you heat it and then bend it. Well, that's Heat the corner. That's a bad. Lucy, hey, get out of there. Stop. Do you want to, what's it like? Pretty excited. Mirror number one. Mirror number two. This is the only one I really truly use because this one half the time my loader's kind of up and I don't see this one much anyway. But that's a nice job. And a new windshield wiper. So I should be able to see better.
So it's almost three o'clock already. I don't know where the day has gone. Uh, we had some meetings in the office this morning after I got back with my milk replacer. And then, uh, yeah, we fixed the mirrors, on, the mirrors on the Bobcat and my windshield wiper. So that's a dream. Yeah, I'm still just in here waiting for babies. I really am trying to think of all the things I haven't done. What I might still do is spread out my hose. It's kind of a process. When I built this barn, I didn't think it through entirely for lambing. It's my one regret. I get asked a lot, like, what's my biggest regret building this barn? It would be not equipping it for, it's fine in the winter, but not when it comes to water and lambing as much. So I have to really think about the things that's gonna keep this guy going and my ewes going, uh, especially in those lambing pens. And water's my biggest limitation. So I do have a bunch of hose here. And all I have is a wee little access hole right down yonder by behind those pails. So I have to get the drill and open that up. The only access to water I have is at my actual water lines. We were smart enough to put a tap there. And the other thing about this barn, it's much better than last year when my roof blew off and I didn't have my chimneys. The chimneys make it a lot better, but I still have that tiny little bit of condensation. You can kind of see it on the floor still, those drops. And it drives me crazy because the drops on the floor isn't just on that floor, it's in the bedding. So literally Carissa will just finish bedding and then I'll come in here and they're already getting wet. And that's from that stupid 10 minute condensation. It's like a rainforest in these, in these temperature swings. So the, the worst possible thing in this barn is when it's really cold at night and then it warms up about 10 degrees during the day. That, that fluctuation in and around zero above and below causes the roof to leak a little bit with condensation. So. Um, I'm hoping that airbag across the road, Mark really likes it. He could not believe it. He hadn't been in my barn forever. And he went in this week and he's like, you weren't kidding about that air quality. It's a completely different barn. I said, yeah. And he's, so we are definitely going to put those air tubes in this barn. Hopefully get it for the spring. That would be really nice to have it all summer. But I'm hoping that will help with this condensation issue. I'm glad I have this ready to go. The one thing I just had to do here quick, it got pretty cold last night. And I forgot to get my light going just for some added heat in here. So I'm really, really hoping I haven't done any damage to that machine. I'm, I'm hoping the barn stayed fairly warm just with all the animals in it, but I don't know. So that's going now um, so I can rest a bit easier for that. It's all these little things that I forget when the seasons change and you have to be kind of on top of it. Uh, I'm hoping once this gets going and lambing gets started that our nights won't get too, too cold because I hate having to insulate those milk lines. So um, really keeping my fingers crossed that we're in for a fairly open December, but we'll see. You saying go? Hey, when are you having your babies? Such a sweetie. Oh, I know who we forgot to go look. We have to go look at Dorothy. Let's go see how she's doing. Bye. She's up at the feed bunk, so I don't want to scare her. But she's eating. There she is. Right there. Good girl. She caught me. That's okay, Dorothy. Look at her. She hates me so much. What I really want to do is get this pen set up with some lambing pens. And I'll show you kind of, I'll give you kind of an overview. I'll, I'll put this camera up somewhere so you can watch me do it. And then I'll kind of take you in and show you how I set those up. But you've probably done it with me before, but it's just so satisfying to watch this in a time lapse.
Okay, so I have quite a few set up actually. This is the glory of having a completely empty pen. I never usually have the space to be able to do this ahead of time. So you guys are just getting such a treat. You know, if I have any problems with slamming, it is not because I wasn't prepared. It is just because probably I got tired. <laughs> So anyway, this is my lambing pens. These are made by Marwell. It's a company in Ontario. I do love these panels. I haven't tried any other panels because these are just so handy and so light and so easy to put together. I'll just grab them. Okay, so this is the, this is the one tab. It's really close to the top. And this is the other tab. It's about a couple inches lower. So they always interlock with each other. So you can always just keep building on no matter which design or whatever you want. They always interlock with each other. So it's a very modular system and I can I can just keep adding. So the nice thing about these is especially on the front where I can leave the leave the panel off the front they can eat out of the bunk. Um, I only need three panels to make a pen instead of all four. The ones on the back I do use the fourth just to keep them from crawling underneath the, uh, crawling underneath there. So I do use four on the back, three on the front. Uh, a few things, oh, a few things I've learned using these pan, these lambing pens. This center alley is wonderful because these little doors open and deflect, kind of like I talked about the sorting gate yesterday same kind of idea. If you give a U, if she thinks she's going straight and then you deflect her, uh, they just move really nice and it's the perfect width to open one of these panels and let the U's through. Uh, some things I don't love is this back section. It's just really hard to feed and water them. You're just always climbing in and out uh, or over these bunks. Uh, the front is easy because they can just eat right out of the bunk. The other thing is they just take up a lot of room. One of the biggest questions that got asked yesterday I threw a, threw a question box on Instagram as to lambing questions. And if you guys have lambing questions, put it down below and I'll try to, I'll try to answer your questions on uh, tomorrow's video or this, the videos this week. But um, one of the biggest questions is why don't I set this up, like the whole thing up, put all the use in these pens? Well, part of the reason is they were given they were given each group, so the groups kind of divided into half. They were all given 21 days to breed. So quite honestly, they could be, they could lamb next week or they might lamb in 21 days. So I'm not keeping a U in a pen for 21 days this size. So is there some close that I could put in it? Yes, but I still like as much as I do have them inside all the time, I try to take their I try to take what they would do kind of instinctually and just let them do it inside a barn. So I do let them wander the whole length of the pen. It's good to keep them moving. I still feel like it maneuvers your lambs a little bit inside. They say that with cattle anyway, they can get the lamb positioning the right way if they can move. And they find their spot, so they nest. And I find if they find their little spot where they want a lamb, uh, I find they bond better with the, with the lamb. So. So yes, I would have maybe less mismothering if I threw them in these pens, but I'm just not equipped to have enough set up for how many potentially could be due at once. And I really don't have a real pinpoint on as to a due date. I have a range, but I don't have an actual day. So people that can do this are people that cedar and they only have rams in for a specific amount of time and very short period of time. So if you have your rams in for three days, you could totally do this because the max you're only going to have a, a U in here for maybe, you know, three to six days type of deal. But even that I find is way too long. So, and it's hard to, to feed and water that many in pens. It would it would just be so inefficient. So that's why uh, that's why I do it. And I do have the milk machine. So if there is mismothering, I do have a plan B. I think that's it for for the lambing setup. And hopefully we don't have to talk too much about prepping because. Hopefully there's babies soon. Got some footage off my nest cameras. There was a few right after she fed that I saw had backed off the bunk. I'm hoping soon there'll be a few starting to lamb, but we'll see. Okay, we are, well, it's almost dark out. 
<laughs> but I did get all the things I wanted to get done. So I have all the water lines hooked up. I am missing about a four foot, maybe five foot little chunk of heat cord I'm gonna have to put from there to the, uh, to the hole in the wall. Um, but I did, my 40 foot was a perfect fit on this one, on part of it. There's three heat cords on this hose. Uh, and you know what always freezes? The, the nozzle. So this might be for nothing, but anyway, so I have that all hooked up, ready to go. So we wait, we wait for babies. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>